Hey everybody, welcome to the J-Chip Show. My name is J-Chip and Happy New Year. Well, it's that time of the year again where I recap all the games I have beaten in 2023. It was a pretty good year. I beat 30 games this year and yeah, I think the games I played were pretty sweet. So let's see what I got. So the very first game I beat in 2023 was digital only and that was Astro Bot Playroom for the PlayStation 5. I had just gotten my PS5 on December 31st, 2022, and the first game I played was Astrobot after it got done updating and all that shit. And man, that game was just fun. That game had so much nostalgia. It was just overloaded with nostalgia, and I had a great time. And it's surprisingly a pretty decent platformer, so hopefully Sony actually continues with that because I'd be interested. Next up was Fantasy Star. Now this is a classic on the Sega Master System, however I played it on the Switch and it was the Cartridge Club game of the month and I had a great time with it. I love RPGs and I know how classic and well received Fantasy Star is so I was pretty excited to go back and play the original Fantasy Star and I was not disappointed. It is a classic JRPG and I had a great time. Sega, you should make another one. That's not Fantasy Star Online. Next up I beat Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, a pretty good game, and it had a great storyline, great graphics, and great music, especially for the time, but this game kind of falls into the pretty good category. It just kind of gets bogged down by some of its negatives. I really wish this game had a map so I wouldn't get lost, and the combat is a little clunky. If this game had a remake, I'd play it. Next up is Madden 19. And I don't have this game anymore because I feel like the newer Madden games just kind of outshine this one. They're not like the old Madden games on the PS2 where I feel like those games you can go back to. For Madden 19, I mean, the game plays pretty good. And it does actually have a storyline. Now, the storyline isn't great, but it is what it is, and it's alright. But i probably just play the newest Madden game if you're, if you're looking for a Madden game. Next up, The Night Witch, a pretty decent shooter on the Nintendo Switch, but it does have a pretty ridiculous difficulty curve towards the end. Next up, uh, Real Monsters for the Super Nintendo. Only played this because I lost a Super Bowl bet to Bargaman Hobo. And don't worry, Hobo, I'm coming for you for the next Super Bowl. Uh, but this is a pretty decent game, but it really needed passwords or saves because the levels are long. But for the most part, pretty decent game, I would say. Next up, Resident Evil 4 Remake. A damn good game for the PlayStation 5 and a damn good remake. Now, I don't know if I like this over the original, but both are fantastic for their own right. Next up, The Evil Within 2. A fantastic survival horror game that, in my opinion, overshadows the original. And the original was already a good game, but I think this just steps it up to a further height, and I hope we get an Evil Within 3. Next up, God of War 2. Finally got this done. I played the original years ago, and I started this up a couple years ago, but the disc was scratched. Finally got it resurfaced, and it played pretty smoothly all the way through, and I finally beat it in 2023. This is a fantastic God of War game, and the story just gets better and better. And I'm looking forward to God of War 3. But out of the first two, this is my favorite. Next game I beat was Flicky. Now, Captain Algebra encouraged me to play a Sega Genesis game. So I did, on the Nintendo Switch. And it was a pretty decent game. But there are some challenging parts in that game. And overall, I had a great time. Next up, another Cartridge Club game, River City Girls. This was a fantastic beat-em-up. Loved the art style, loved the music. Had a great time with it. Looking forward to playing River City Girls 2 at some point. Next up is Red Dead Revolver for the PlayStation 2. A pretty decent cowboy game, but not the greatest. Next game I beat was New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. And it was a pretty fun game, like all Mario games. But the problem is, is that this game was just a little too generic. And a little too easy for my taste. But still, a really fun Mario game. Next game I beat was A Hat in Time, a really fun 3D platformer that I thought was going to be kind of mid, but as I kept going and going, the game just got more fun and I couldn't put it down, so I highly recommend it. Next up, Ape Escape. This was a fantastic game and I loved it. 
I had a great time with it. This was a recommendation from the Cartridge Club Game of the Month as well as one of my patrons. So I reviewed it and I did the podcast episode for them and I loved it. I can't wait to check out the sequels. One of my favorites that I beat. Next game I beat was Winback. Now I have this on the Nintendo 64 and I also have it on PS2. But I play the Switch version because I don't have a N64 memory card. So I just stuck with the Switch version. And interestingly enough, that game also doesn't let you manually save. You have to just do a save state after you beat a level just because, I mean, that's when you would save anyway. So might as well put a save state there. But Win Back was a really fun game. I had a great time with it. And that was one of the, one of the childhood games I had back in the day. So really glad that I got that done. Next up, Contra Shattered Soldier. This game is a pain in the ass, but it's still really fun. This is a very difficult Contra game, and I'm super glad I got done. And yeah, this was fucking hard, but it's a great game, so check it out. And check out Neo Contra. That, in my opinion, is the best Contra game ever made. Next up, Clock Tower 3. A pretty quirky game, a pretty interesting survival horror game. I would recommend you check it out, but only for the right price, or just emulate it, but either way, Clock Tower 3, it was an experience. Next up, I beat Separate Ways, the DLC for Resident Evil 4, and I thought they did an amazing job, and in my opinion, that was way better than the original Separate Ways. Next up, The Callisto Protocol, an alright survival horror game, it has its moments, but I would rather play Dead Space. Next up, DuckTales on the NES. This was a backlog roulette game as well as Life is Strange, I forgot to mention that. But DuckTales on the NES is a fantastic game. I actually played the remaster way back in the day on the Xbox 360. And that game was fantastic, so finally glad I played the original. Next up, Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. This was an amazing, amazing game. Great follow-up to the original Spider-Man on PS4 and Miles Morales. And I actually 100%ed the entire game. I got all the trophies, and I could not put this down when I started playing. Check out the uh, Cartridge Club podcast I was in for this one. It was really good, and I had a lot of fun time with this game. Next up, The Pathless. A pretty fun game, pretty interesting, but it's on the easy side. Next up, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. A classic PlayStation 2 game, and one of my favorite reviews I've ever done for this game. Go check that out. That was that was a good video for me. So, yeah. And also, V-Rock is the best station. Next game I beat was Celeste. A fantastic game that was recommended by the Cartridge Club, and I had a great time with it. The very next game I beat was Spider-Man Miles Morales for the PlayStation 4. This game was really good. I love Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, and I wanted to play this for a while. And I only played the PS4 version because it's the one I have. And I know I could upgrade to the PS5, but I just, I just didn't. But this game was amazing. Next game I beat was Life is Strange. A pretty decent game. The acting is a little cringe, but the story I thought was pretty good. And maybe I'll check out the sequels. We'll see. Next game I beat was Ridge Racer 5. Now, for whatever reason, I just wanted to play a racing game at the time I played this. And this really scratched that itch. This is a fun racing game. And the last race was a pain in the ass. But this is still a really fun racing game. And I highly recommend you check it out if you're into arcade simulation racer games. Hey guys, editing chip here. I forgot to mention that I did beat Contra and Super C. Both fantastic games on the Nintendo. For me personally, I like Super C a little bit more, but Contra on the NES is definitely an iconic game, and just an iconic franchise in general. And the last game that I beat in 2023 was Deliver Us the Moon, a walking simulator on the moon, and it was alright. The story was pretty interesting, but I wish there was just some more meat on this bone. And that does it. That's every single game I have beaten in 2023. Now, I know that there were some analytics that I said I was going to do for this one, but to be honest with you, I kind of forgot. But I would say that I played a bit more modern than retro. Either way, 
I love all games, and I had a great time. So my goal next year is to beat 40 games and play a game on every console that I own. So hopefully I get there. And huge shout out to Retro Rivals and Captain Algebra for inspiring me to do this. Scott has his video out. I'm not sure when Jen is going to have her video out. but And also same with Captain Algebra. But whenever those videos release, go check them out. This is a really fun video to do and just look back on the games that I've beaten. And I would say this was a pretty fun year.